Hello, 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 everyone. We are now live on Facebook as well as recording this Money Mindset Masterclass. It's Melissa Rubini Smith. If you have been following me for a little bit, you'll know that I have my different levels of limitless memberships that go from Limitless Silver with weekly upgrades for you at 33 a month to Limitless Gold, where you have access to all my paid programs and master classes for 333. And then there is Limitless Platinum and Diamond, where you have direct access to me with bespoke coaching calls and retreats. But I also love to share my content as much as possible and impact the largest amount of women around the world as possible. So I also have free master classes such as this one and bundles, which are a collection of master classes and programs focused on a specific theme. I have lots of options, and my intention is that you will choose your level of investment, both time, energy, and financial-wise. Investment is depending on how much life transformation you desire and how fast and with how much ease you desire to achieve that in your life. So in this masterclass, we are discussing this month's theme in Limitless, which is money mindset. During this masterclass, we will discuss a few different concepts, and I will share with you nine mindset, mindset shifts you can start to achieve now in your life. We are about to embark on a full hour about money mindset. This is going to be a lot of fun. I am so beyond excited to welcome you to this masterclass and to share with you the knowledge and mindset shift that is responsible for changing the way that I look at money completely. It is such a breakthrough in how you look, how you welcome, how you feel, how you calibrate to money, cash, finances, wealth. This is going to be so powerful. With this masterclass, I desire for you to open your mind to learn about these mindset shifts that will allow you for will allow for you to expand your horizons when it comes to money. This is a transformation that will occur starting on this masterclass. After that, on the Allure models of Limitless Silver. And um, as Money Mindset is our theme for the month of March, we'll continue on the Momentum program where we'll go in depth on Money Mindset, on new ways to look at and get your budget done, ways to improve your calibration to how much you earn and to open space for you to welcome more wealth into your life. Why is the Money Mindset so powerful? I really desire to be an example for women all over the world of what is possible to achieve during your lifetime. And money is one of the things that interferes with our sense of worth and our ability to have freedom to not just live the lives we desire, but also to have the ability to be fully realized human beings. Our money mindset, when related to worthiness, numbers, to limiting beliefs, is really distorted and limiting. Our past beliefs and experience have conditioned us to behave and believe in certain ways that make our abundance experience in this world extremely limited. We are limitless and we live in a limitless universe. So we we'll expand our ways of being and go beyond the subconscious behaviors that attach us to lack instead of abundance. This is going to be incredible. This is about living a happy life with freedom. This is about something that you might not have tried before, 
If this is something you enjoy, you can join us now to continue this journey together. So welcome to the Money Mindset Masterclass. My intention with this masterclass is that you will listen to this content and discover new and more positive ways to think about, experience, relate to money, finances, and wealth in your life. This is something that I am currently working on. I am inviting you to come with me on this journey. And as I progress and as I develop my knowledge and experience on this subject, I will be sharing more and more with you of what is working and what else you can learn to welcome more wealth of all levels into your life. Let's jump right into it. The only thing I request is that you have available for this masterclass is an open mind, a thought process of what if I consider this idea, this type of mindset without prejudgment, without already letting your mind default to old ways of thinking and a journal or a notebook and a pen. That's all. You can listen to the whole content and come back to do the activities I suggest, or you can pause the video afterwards and do the activities and then move forward to the next shift, okay? It is completely up to you. This is your experience. There is no right or wrong way to do it. So here we go. What is money mindset? You might be wondering. You might have heard about manifestation, affirmations, and all kinds of things. Actually, a money mindset is an overriding attitude that you have about money and your finances. It has nothing to do with woo-woo stuff, really. It drives how you make key financial decisions every day, and it can have a big impact on your ability to achieve your goals. If you change your mindset about money, you tend to make better choices about how to overcome challenges, how to earn money, how to spend money, and much more. Can we, can we add to that the affirmations, you know, the, the frequency, the vibration, all of that? Yes, we can. We can add as we wish. But on top of it is something that is very serious and something that you should definitely think about right away. Today, I am sharing with you nine powerful mindset shifts. They open codes that forever changed how I see the world and therefore changed my reality. So money mindset shift number one, you don't want money. I believe that the majority of the good hearted women that are here watching this masterclass doesn't actually want money. Why do I believe that? Because I don't think that what you actually want is to hug money and sleep with money and look at money the whole day and stack money for the sake of stacking money. I believe that you want freedom. You want to be able to live a good life. You want to provide for your family, for your loved ones. You want to have access to beautiful experiences in life. You want to travel. You want to buy healthy food. Food. you want to buy gifts, you want to help someone that is going through a hard time, you want to pay for high quality health care, you want to have peace of mind, you want to own your house and not have to worry about rent, you want what money can provide you. Money is a resource used in this world as a form of exchange, that's all. Money is not good, Money is not bad, money is not easy, money is not difficult. When we start chasing money, we start operating at a much lower frequency. Holding the bills can bring a certain thrill for a few moments, but only because you know that we are able to do something that we desire with that money. That's all. We as humans, as women, 
are here in this universe to have experience, to have feelings. And in our case, without money, we're not able to realize our full expression of ourselves. So if you ask me, how much money do I desire to have? The amount of money I desire is more than enough for money to not choose for me. I choose. I choose the food I want to buy. I choose the gift I want to give. I choose the vacation I want to go on. I choose the charity I contribute to. I choose the amount of time I spend working and the amount of time I spend with my loved ones. So what I actually desire is freedom to be the full expression of my being during my lifetime. And how can that be a bad thing? I desire that for myself and for every other human being on earth. And me having less will not help others having more. The opposite. The more I have, the more opportunities I can share, the more I can focus on sharing my gifts instead of worrying, the more I can do good for me and for my loved ones. So what do you actually want? Stay in the frequency of your desire, of your whys, not in the frequency of a number. Shift to a higher frequency. Money mindset shift. Number two, why don't you want what you want? This is an interesting one. Do you actually want what you say you want? I will give you an example that happened to me. In the past, when I had my full-time job, I experienced really high levels of stress. I had a schedule that would prevent me from spending time with my daughter. I was tired all the time and so on. So I learned, my body and my mind learned that experience, that burned out. It was almost a trauma. Sometime later, maybe two years later, after I had started my own business, I experienced a few months when even though things had been going well and my business had been growing, things started to stall. I would say that I wanted my business and my revenue to grow and it wasn't happening. So I started looking at all the possibilities of what could be happening. What I learned is that I was sabotaging myself without even noticing. Each time new orders came in, I would have this feeling of dread. Every time I received an email with a question from a client, I would close the email and not want to answer. Why? Did, did I not want to treat my clients with the utmost care? Um, of course, I wanted them to have a great experience and be happy with their purchase. Did I not want to, you know, to have my business grow? No, I wanted to have my business grow. I wanted my business, my revenue to grow, but I did not want to get burned out again. I wanted more sales, but I didn't want to stay working until late and start not having time for my family anymore. I wanted to grow my business, but I wanted to have time for strategy, for new ideas, and not for the same repetitive tasks over and over again. My intentions were not aligned and therefore I wasn't moving with the conviction and excitement that I needed to move in order to step into the next level. So find a solution. It was time to scale my business. It was time to hire someone to help me. As soon as I did that, I was able to continue making progress in my business. So take a look at why you might not be wanting to what you to do or to receive what you say that you want. Do you actually want it? That's number one. What part of it don't you want? 
what you don't want is your desire or the fear of not achieving your desire. Let's shift our mindset here. Usually what we don't want is not the thing in itself, but what previously learned that can come with the thing we want and that you can change. You want a loan to scale your business, but you might not want that. You want a promotion, but you don't want the extra responsibility. You want more money, but you don't want to pay higher taxes or you don't want to have people asking you for money. You want more money, but you think that you are not good managing it. Look at what actually is behind you not being completely open and ready to receive and go full on on that desire and shift. We go in much more depth on all these concepts during the Momentum program, where we actually go through it and get the work done together. But I so wanted to have this information available to all of you. Money mindset shift number three. What money coming in actually means. I have found through past experience, that even more for women and for good-hearted women like you and me, sometimes we have a hard time wanting money to come in and feeling, really feeling that we desire money to come in. We might have a hard time charging for our service. We might have a hard time reminding someone that they forgot to pay us. We might feel bad asking for a raise. We might not want to bother someone and ask for a refund. We might not want to ask for the sale. We might have a hard time offering our service to more people. Think about the circumstances where there would be money available for you and you are not choosing to pursue it. The ones I mentioned are some common ones, but I'm, I'm quite sure you'll be able to find more than those when you take a few minutes to think about it. Now, make a list of all those circumstances. Next, I would like for you to list all the benefits that someone receives when they pay for your service or your product. If you are employed, it is still your service as well. What are you giving so they give you that amount of money in exchange? Is your service of value? Of course it is. And lastly, I would like for you to list all that you would do if that money came in, when that money came in. What would you do with that money? I know you are a good-hearted woman, so start listing. I would... Let's say I would pay for my bills with ease and have money left at the end of the month so I would not have to worry. I would buy new clothes to my for my children. I would fix um, the bathroom in my house. I would buy a newer and more comfortable, reliable car. I would um, buy healthier, organic food for my family. Maybe I would spoil myself a bit. I would buy a gift for a loved one. I would help someone in my family that is going through a hard time. I would start my new business. What would you do with the money? I would pay for education. I would um, donate to charity. Now, how can it be of more service for you to not offer your service or products, which I am so sure are good service and products that will benefit whoever pays for it, than to offer it to as many people as possible. Your services and products will benefit others and what you receive in return will benefit you and your loved ones. Everybody wins. You know, how to choose and spend your money wisely. You will use your money for good. You deserve to earn the money you desire to earn. You will use it all for good. Now, let's move forward 
and go to money mindset shift number four, letting go of your limiting beliefs. You have had um, up until now, a lifetime of evidence and information that has been shown to you. You have had positive evidence and you also had negative ones. For the purpose of this masterclass, we are focusing on money and finances, but the same can be applied, the same process can be applied to other areas of your life. From the time you were a child, you witnessed or heard things such as money doesn't grow on trees. Do you think you own the electric company? You heard your parents perhaps talking about paying bills or acting stressed about finances. And you, with your mind and ability at that time, at that age, you acquired a thought, a belief as a result of that information. You possibly started thinking that making money is hard, that you are not as good as others that have money. There's not enough money for me. Money is scary and stressful. Money brings fights between adults or the other way around, negatively talking about people that have money. Oh, it is easy for her. She has money. She comes from so-and-so family. So if you are listening to me now and you are realizing that you have been thinking those and other thoughts without ever even considering if they are true or not, you have an opportunity to start thinking about it now and perhaps choose differently. You can choose to think differently. You can create a different experience around money and finances for yourself and your family. It does not have to be scary. It does not have to be based in lack. It does not have to be stressful or provoke fights. All those perceptions and stories are actually created based on the lack of money not in having money. You see the difference? The expressions and experience, I would say, at least 90% of the time are related to the fact that money is not available for them. And the experience you are learning is someone else's experience, which does not have to be your own because there are many, many different experiences available for you in this world. So take some time to look at what you have learned about money during your lifetime. What did the experiences in your home when you were a kid taught you about money? What the experience perhaps in school taught you about money? What the experience you had, you know, when you were younger at your first job perhaps taught you about money? Now take your journal and start listing all these answers, listing all the negative things that come to your mind when you ask yourself these questions. What did the experiences in your home when you were a kid taught you about money? What the experiences you had in school taught you about money? What experience did you have in your past that were negative and perhaps they taught you something about money, about rich people, about wealth, about your worth? What did your own behavior towards money has taught you? Keep going. Keep thinking about it and writing those negative and limiting beliefs. Let's bring all of it to the surface. Next, as soon as you feel that you're complete, I would like for you to write a better story for yourself. Choose to think differently. Bring a more positive thought to this idea instead. You can ask yourself, is it true? Is it possible? to be different for me? Is it 
possible to be different for anyone else in the world? Is it different for anyone else in the world? And so if it is, why not for you as well? Try to shift this belief as fast as your mind can get behind right now. So for example, um, let's, let's, say if you, let's say if you witnessed your parents stressed about paying the bills. Perhaps there were fights or there were hard choices to be made and you learned that it is hard to support yourself. It is hard to pay bills. It is hard to support your family. Then let's look at it. Let's take a moment and let's look at it. This might have been true for your parents. Is it true for every human being in the planet? Or there are people that have money to pay their bills without worry? Are that people that have money for their bills, for their desires, for their investments, and to put away for trusts, for the kids, and charity, and so on? Could it be different for you? Is there even the smallest possibility that it could be different for you than it was for your parents? What can you believe right now that is more positive than your current way of thinking? Perhaps you can think, even though this was my past experience, it does not have to be like this for the rest of my life. Or... This was my parents' reality and does not have to be my reality any longer. I choose to see it differently moving forward. You know what I mean? You look at your negative belief, you question it, and you find a more positive way to look at it moving forward. It might feel true. You might have evidence that it has been true, but is there a law? in the universe that says that it has to be that way no there is always a better way to look at it it is like a cleanse of past negative beliefs related to money and finances we go in much more depth during my momentum program but this is a huge opportunity for you to get started in clearing these beliefs and shifting your money mindset to a more positive one ready for money mind mindset shift number five you have to work hard to make money seriously is that actually true is it true that the harder you work, the more money you make? Let's see. By this thought process, who would you say would be the richest people in the world? Who works really hard? In my mind, these, let's say, let's see, this is, this is what comes up. The single mother that has a day job goes back home to give dinner to the kids and then has an evening shift at another job to help in the amount of money she needs in order to cover her basic expenses and put food on the table. I think she works hard. The nurse who does extremely long shifts and works on holidays and weekends to be able to pay rent and help her mother pay for medicines. Or the housekeeper, who starts work before sunrise, cleaning her own house and preparing food for the kids, and then goes on to clean three or four more houses in one day before walking back home to not spend money on transportation and still gets home to make sure that the kids are doing homework before she starts to make dinner and is straightened up the house before bed. No. Working hard does not necessarily equals making good money. Working hard equals working hard. Think about it. We believe in things that make no sense whatsoever. Working is smart is a different thing. 
And as your business grows, the more your business grows, the easier it gets. You can hire people to help you. You can have more experience and not take as long to do certain things. As you make more money, you can leverage your money and invest and your money makes more money for you. As you have more, um, more, you can have more support. You learn through the process and make even smarter decisions. You implement better process. So hard work is an option, an alternative, a phase perhaps, but it does not have to be this way for the rest of your life. And it is not this way that many, many people make great money. There are certain things we believe our whole lives that aren't even true. How could you make it easier for yourself? Is there anything that you could shift right now that would make earning money easier. So consider what other ways you could look at it and shift your money mindset. Money mindset shift number six. Money is bad. Okay, money is bad. Rich people are evil. Oh, okay. So every criminal in the history of the world was wealthy. Every husband that abused his wife was wealthy. The majority of robbers that break into houses or steal cars are wealthy. Are there wealthy people that give to charities? Are there wealthy people whose companies provide jobs to thousands of people? Are there wealthy people that volunteer and help others? And yes, there might be a criminal that is wealthy and there might be a wealthy person that is greedy and there might be a poor person that is a criminal as well. And there is a poor person that if they won the lottery, they would be greedy. Does it depend on money? No, if anything, I would say that if I didn't have any money and was desperate to feed my children, as some are, I could be more vulnerable to steal so my child could eat. Where if I had more than enough money, I would certainly give money to other mothers that needed to feed their children. So can we start opening our minds to let go of illusions and judgments and welcome truth instead? Can we shift our mindset here? Is it greedy for me to earn more money? Is it true? No. I can think of so many good things I can do with more money. I can hire someone to support me on my business and that money will support that person and their family. And in exchange, I will have more time to spend with my daughter so I will be a better mother. Am I selfish person for wishing to have more money? No. I want peace of mind. I want to be able to pay for my daughter's school. I want to not worry about money so I can be less stressed and have more time to share my work with the world and women around the world can benefit from my service. I will circulate money and support good business so they too can thrive. There's nothing greedy or selfish for you to have more money because I am completely and entirely certain that a good-hearted woman like you will do great things with money. If not you, who? Who do you think that should have more money than you? You having more money will start an abundance ripple effect in the world. So if you don't need more for yourself and you have the opportunity of receiving more, why not receive more for others and to improve something that you can improve in the world? In reality, I, I believe that us good-hearted women 
not making more money is actually a disservice to the world. Wealth is not necessarily luxury if what you don't want to experience is luxury. Money is opportunity. Money is a resource. Money is possibilities. Money is what you do with it. That's all. Make sense? Can you shift now? Money mindset number seven. I don't know how to make money or I don't have a job. We each have service that we can provide to others. Says who you need to have a job in order to have money. Right now, if you don't have a job, you can change your status from unemployed to entrepreneur and you can start making money right now. You can have your own business. You can serve others with your talents, with whatever it is that you know how to do. I would like for you to start a list of all the possible ways that money could come into your life next, from salary to side hustles to lottery to selling things you don't need any longer to helping someone and get getting paid for it getting hired for a job someone calling you and asking to hire you someone that owes you money and you forgot um paying you back finding money on the floor keep going Keep listing all the possible ways that people make money and that you too could possibly do. Doesn't matter how much money you already have. This is about circulating more, generating more. So we generate more abundance, both for us, for our loved ones, and for everybody else around us. Now, it does not mean that you have to do these things. But what it does is it shifts your mindset from a place of lack to a place of possibility. And if you think next that nobody would hire you or would have money to buy your services or products, just know this. There are about 56 million people in this world who have more than a million dollars. 56 million people in this world who have more than a million dollars. And you don't need to sell just to millionaires as they are only 1% of the world population. There are certainly people that can pay for your service. There are a lot of people that can pay for your services or products. Stop focusing on the bad and start focusing on how great your service or product can be and start sharing your gifts with the world. What do you have to offer? I am sure you have something to offer. Every single person has something to offer. Money mindset shift number eight. I don't have money. Well, let's think about this one. You are here. In order for you to be here, you either have access to a phone or a computer. If you have a phone and a computer, you also have money to pay for internet access. Now, if the above is true, you wouldn't pay for internet and for phone, if you couldn't eat, and if you were sleeping in the street. So you must have money for food and for shelter. You have at least the basics right now. And if you have money for food and shelter, and probably other basics, and a phone or a computer, you already have money to survive. So you have money. You just don't yet have the necessary amount for you to have the life that you desire to have. And that's different. So now you want more of what you already have. 
that's better than lack, than not having. That's a step forward. Now, I want for you to think about everything that you are already able to pay with gratitude. Everything that is already in your life, everything that you already have access to, you already have money. You are now working to welcome more into your life. Okay, are you ready? Money mindset shift number nine, our last shift for this masterclass. Decide how you wanted it to be moving forward. This is about you choosing what keeps you in the frequency of abundance. In order to stay in that elevated frequency, we will explore a few things. A couple of things. Frequency of gratitude and celebration, frequency of desire, frequency of limitless freedom, all those frequencies you can keep practicing moving forward. I want, I want to, in addition to you know, sharing those other shifts and sharing these frequencies that you can easily implement in your life, I want to share a few thoughts that you that will help you let go of your current money mindset and welcome a more abundant and free way of looking at money, cash, wealth. Money as a tool. Life is not all about survival, but when you are in lack, it does become a matter of survival. Life is not all about breathing, but if you couldn't breathe if there was an air, it would become about it. Life is not about water, but if we were thirsty and didn't have water, it would become about that. So life isn't about money, but in the lack of it, it becomes about money. We worry about it, we obsess about it, we make choices based on the lack of it. And so we calibrate to a frequency of lack, of survival, instead of a frequency of abundance and more than enough, which is actually the reality of this universe. This world doesn't look the same for all of us. Each one of us has been trained to look, experience, behave, and feel things in different ways. I wish it was not true, but we collect limiting beliefs during our lives. And as we progress, we start behaving as if those beliefs were in fact the only way possible forward. We're going to expand our minds here and learn to see again. Things are sometimes so clear and so in our face, but we cannot see. Let's now try to be open to the possibility that you could see things differently. The possibility that there is something off about the way that you are experiencing the world up until now. So my first question for you is, is what you see all that there is? Yes or no? Yes or no? So let's think about a few things. Is all the money available to you the amount that you are aware of? Could there be a payment you forgot that it was to come in? Could someone give you a gift? Could a prize be given to you? Um, could you be hired for a new project and make money with that? Could you find money you had forgotten inside a purse? Could someone recommend your product and spread like rapid fire so you start having better and better sales days? You know what I mean? Can you expand your vision a little bit here? Are all the customers that are interested in your product or service the ones that you, are, that you are aware of? 
are those the only ones? Could there be customers that looked at your, looked at your website, but didn't sign up for your email and they're waiting for the right time in their lives to make the purchase they desire? Is that a possibility? Could someone be looking at your social media and be making plans to shop, to hire you, to take the next, you know, make the next move? Could there be a customer that is recommending you to everybody she knows? Are all the forms available for you to make money the ones that you are currently aware of? Could you be offered a new job? Could you have a new idea for a service or offer? Are any of these things a possibility? Could you create a new product that sells millions? Could a famous person mention your product or service and all of a sudden orders start coming in without you having any idea that that was going to happen? Expand your possibilities. Are those the parts you currently are able to see? And if not, how many more aren't you able to see? You can keep going, listing, and the length of the list just depends on your creativity and how far you can expand your mind. What you see is just a small fraction of what already exists. There are definitely already some of these possibilities happening at this very moment. When you think about your life and list things related to your experience, there will be for sure already a few things that are happening and available for you right now. Then there will be more things that are a possibility but with a really good probability of happening. And then there will be other things that will be considered just, you know, a far shot. But it's possible, but you really don't see how that could happen. And still, there will be things that you will consider only a miracle yet. Those are not completely zero possibility because nothing is. Now, if you thought, let me try to put it another way. If you thought of an iceberg, that would give you a very clear image of what is actually happening in life. There is the part that you see of the iceberg, right? There is a reason that people say, oh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. The iceberg's visible part is only the tip of it. Under the surface, underwater, is where the whole iceberg is formed. It is estimated, stay with me here, that 90% of the iceberg is underwater below the surface. Now, if I ask you again, is what you see all that there is? Yes or no? you only see a piece of what is available for you to see. The full picture of what is happening is actually not visible. And I don't say this even based on energy, manifestation, universal quantum possibilities, which is also a possibility that could exist. I say this based just on concrete material possibilities. Wealth is like that. Your business is like that. Your career is like that. Your life is like that. Below the surface, there is so much more money that you can see right now. Beneath the surface of what you are experiencing right now, there is so much more. You only see the tip of the iceberg when it comes to money. Not just you, just see the smallest piece of it, but you are not seeing the largest one. Therefore, you are operating in a way that is so limited compared to where you could be operating, that it is not even just limited, it is distorted 
because it warps your sense of reality. Now, I understand that we experience lack, we experience stress, we experience not having it. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a possibility for more. That is not true. When you go back in your life and think about your life experience, can you say that you are extremely good at predicting what happens next? I know that if I had to write a book about my life, even stretching my imagination to as far as I could, I would not be able to tell my life story as it happened. So, could you open your mind a little bit more, perhaps? Just a little bit more. Could you expand your mind just a little bit more when it comes to what is a probability and what is a possibility in your life when it comes to money? Could you, instead of thinking that it is a no, from now on, you start consider that, considering that it could be a yes for you. It could be a yes for you when it comes to wealth. Maybe what you see right now is just the tip of your own iceberg. And if it is just the tip of your iceberg, what would you do next? How would you look at your business? How would you think about your life? What would your money mindset be then? As soon as I get my money mindset in place, I see exponential growth. I have seen it happening. I have done it. And I am practicing having it become stable in my life next. So I can scale it to financial freedom and limitless wealth over my lifetime. But I've seen like when I have my mindset in the right place, things just start to flow. Things just start to happen. It is unbelievably faster how things happen, how things just fall into place, ideas come. It's, it's, there's no, no possible way for me to question it. I have experienced so many times that there is no way anymore for me to question it. This month, we are changing our money mindset together. What, it, what we know now when it comes to money is what we can see. Let's be open to be aware that we are seeing only the tip. There's 90% underneath. Can you imagine that? Another way of looking at it. Um, when you look at a seed, do you see the tree? When you look at the ocean, do you see all the fish and see all the creatures that live in it? When you look at a field bare in the winter, do you see all the flowers that will bloom in the spring? So when you think about the potential for what is to come to you in your future, why is it so limited? And why do you say that you have to see to believe it? And why are you so sure that it is only what you can see now that is true for you next? Could you perhaps not just open your mind for the possibility of what is to come, but also start planting seeds and know that if you plant seeds every day, they will grow. Perhaps not overnight, perhaps not in a week, but those seeds, at least a large part of them will come to grow. Can you plant the seed and tomorrow go back and dig the dirt and look at how it is doing to make sure it's growing? No. If you look, then you would just have evidence that it is not growing with the way that you can see at that moment. Can you, after a week, go back and take that seed off and say, 
the seed's not good. It didn't grow to be a tree yet. I'll plant another seed. No, you can plant another seed, but keep watering the one you planted already. Can you, after a few months, when the tree is just starting to grow and you go there and remove the tree from the soil and throw it away and say, this tree is too small. This is a small tree. I wanted a big tree. This tree will never grow. I mean, I guess you can do all of those things. Are those wise choices based on the seed's potential or just based on what you are currently able to see? There is more to everything in this universe than meets the eye. Know that you are making progress. Widen your perspective and know that there is more than what you can see now. And plant new seeds every day and water your seeds and keep taking care of them. Make sure that there's some light in them. At the same time, at the same time, you can look and see nothing. But you could be so wrong. Everything that you are doing is happening just at a timeline that is different than the one that you have established in your mind. There's more money available for you than the money that you can see. So since there is more than you can see, how are you going to act next? With trust, with confidence, knowing, and in your power. Any entrepreneur will tell you that in order to keep moving, you need to trust. How do you trust and have confidence when you don't see? Because that is what is true. And that is what successful people see. Because that is what is true. And that is what wealthy people see. When you start believing in this new truth, then you align to this frequency and by aligning to this frequency, you start acting in alignment with it. We are not separated from the nature. We are not separated from the universe. We actually created money. We are the creators of time. We invented them. We invented the rules. Now, it is time we adjust our beliefs to extent of our creative power. Life without time was just complicated. Life without money was just complicated. We invented it to make life easier. Time and money were not invented to define your worth and how you live your life. Everything that points to that evidence is not true. There is no money that will tell you if you are worthy or not to make you feel more or less. So it is time we bring back truth to the surface. If you are waiting for money to arrive so you feel good about yourself, stop right now because that will be a big, big disappointment you desire money let's bring money to a desire frequency money is money can we bring our minds to this point of the master class are you able to stay with me here and feel this your experience is not necessarily what it actually is what you see is not all that there is we will continue to deepen it so we'll feel more and more expensive and more and more free during momentum. You might have heard a lot of new things you might have known already. And this beginning is just a reminder. And you might now, after listening to these nine shifts, start embodying it. I want for you to anchor this information and ask yourself, where can I start questioning my past beliefs related to wealth and money and try to see things differently moving forward? This is just the tip of the iceberg for you, but it is already a great start and so 
much can already improve in your life if you go through these shifts and give new starts towards a life how you desire to live. How do you desire your financial life to look like? What do you desire to be true for you moving forward? I desire, I decide that I live in an abundant world. I decide that my services are worthy of compensation. I decide that I will do good things with money. I decide that 90% of what is just a part that I cannot see, but is right there, available for me. What do you decide? May this be a beginning of a new financial story for you. And may you, with that, start a new ripple effect in your world. If you enjoyed this and want to continue this journey towards more financial freedom with me, just send me a message at Melissa Rubini Smith or email hello at melissarubinismith.com and someone from my team will be in touch with you. If you are already in my world, I am so honored to have you. If you are on Limitless Silver and would like to upgrade to gold to have the full experience of Momentum and also the Overflow Masterclass that comes out at the end of the month, just let me know. I look forward to continuing this journey with you and celebrating many success milestones together. I look forward to hearing from you how after these shifts, you were able to make decisions that change the course of your life. I look forward to living a free life with you where you choose, not money. I love you. You're beautiful. You are capable. You are deserving of the life you desire. Cheers to a life full of wealth, wisdom, and wonder. I will see you again very, very soon.